views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit, and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the Posse of Angels, I'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. But before we get to those callers, welcome everyone to Angel Healing House Radio. You know, I mentioned in my last show that with tax time looming on the horizon here in the States, the theme for April is abundance. And the Posse of Angels have entitled today's show, You Are Wealthy, Rich, and Prosperous. Now, this week's show was inspired by a client who explained to me that her whole life had become unexciting and dull as her days all seemed to roll into one another, and she wished to receive some messages, well, specifically about her career. I said that it felt like her energetic tank was empty and that uh, there was no joy or passion in her life anymore. I explained that in order to change our realities, it was necessary to change our energies within. And even though we may not feel joyful with our current lives, what is fundamental to changing anything is to create a different energetic frequency around it. Since we are all mirrors for our realities, her boring life was reflecting the lackluster and boredom within herself. Now to start to raise our frequencies, it is important to focus on being grateful and appreciative for our blessings. Now, the Posse of Angels is reminding us that by being grateful for exactly what we do have, then the universe recognizes and identifies this energy as abundance. And then it will send us more abundant blessings in life and in line with our heartfelt intentions and our desires. Even though the universe is always giving to us and desires what we desire, it is so often we actually close ourselves off and we cause resistance to receiving by focusing on things that we do not have and on what is not going right in our lives. By practicing gratitude daily, we begin to feel more abundant And the universe reads these feelings as prosperous and wealthy, 
even though we have not added one single cent to our bank accounts. Now, this concept of being prosperous and wealthy is actually foreign to many of us because we've been programmed to get our worthiness and our identity from one thing and one thing only, and that is how much money we possess. I was um, when I was asked to be a speaker at a financial seminar several years ago. I presented this exercise to the audience. I held up a twenty dollar bill, and I said, "Who in the audience would like this twenty dollar bill?" Well, of course, all the hands shot up in the air, and then I said, "Hold on, let me do something first. And I took the bill and I crumpled it into my fist. And then I said, okay, now who wants it? And all the hands still went up. I then said to the audience, but wait, I'll do one more thing. And then I proceeded to drop the money on the floor and I stepped on it and I ground it into the floor. And then I then said, now who still wants this money? And you know what, listeners? All the hands still went up in the audience. I then pointed out that we were just shown a very valuable lesson. For no matter what I did to the money, the audience still wanted it because it did not decrease in value. It was still worth twenty dollars. You know, throughout our lives, the amount of money that we have goes up. And it goes down, and when it's up, we feel great. And when it's down, many of us choose to feel worthless. But the truth is that no matter how many green units—this is what I call the money in the states because it's green—no matter how many green units that we have, we will never lose our value. This is because abundance. Is our nature? We have been gifted with the blessing of an abundant nature. In any single moment, we have the pure potential to create more. This means it's our divine inheritance to be wealthy, to be rich, and to be prosperous. Through our free will, we can choose to feel less than, crumpled, stepped on, dirty, or worthless. Because we don't have enough of those green units or money in the bank account, money or no money, you are priceless to the universe and to those who love you. And your sense of self worth and wealth truly has nothing to do with how much money you have. You know, it was at this financial seminar that I did another exercise with the audience. I said to them, "I'd like everyone to do something for me. I want you to visu- visualize approximately the amount of money that you have in that you currently have in your bank account. Truly focus on it, and now put your hand up if you are wealthy or rich. Very few people put their hands up. The point here is if you equate the feeling of richness." Uh, the, Inside of you, with what amounts to those green units that you have, you're sending out a very clear message to the universe that you are actually diminishing your unlimited potential to create abundance and limiting your sources of richness and where richness can come from in your life, because you're telling the universe to only send your abundance in one form. When in fact, there's an infinite abundance that the universe is aching to give to us each and every day. When、um, our jobs and our careers are such a minute portion of the way to allow abundance to find us in our lives, by equating our wealth with how much money we have in our bank account, as if someone said to me, and I'm sitting in a room. There is a vast, limitless blue sky above you. Would I then look up at the ceiling and say, "No, no, that's the limit. That's as far as it goes, because that's as far as I can see 
at the moment when I may just take a few, when I may just have to take a few steps to the window where I can see a vast blue limitless sky, but I know that it's up there. Well, you know, everyone looking at your bank account the way it is right this very moment and saying that that is the limit to your wealth would be the same as saying that the ceiling was the limit to as far as I can see. How much money you have now has nothing to do with the wealth of who you are and your extraordinary limitless capacity to be a magnet to amass more into your life. You know, one of the greatest assets that we all have is we share an infinite potential within us, this power to be able to create. And even those people who say that they are not creative, they're creating every single day with the energies of the words they choose to speak, the thoughts they choose to think, and the chosen feelings and emotions in their hearts. And, you know, when we start to live a conscious, enlightened, aware life, knowing that we can actually choose our words, the feelings and thoughts that we have, we can choose them to be positive, optimistic, and hopeful instead of pessimistic and negative. We will then begin to paint a more positive reality for ourselves. But most people look at life through the eyes of falling short. By choice, they will see the glass as half empty instead of seeing it as half full. Each one of us is so very powerful that by putting any of our emphasis on not having enough money, it will keep our energies vibrating at the lack of uh, at the level of lack and wanting and needing and because everything is energy and the universe the universal laws of attraction clearly state that like energies attract like energies then we will continue to attract more lack to ourselves just think how much emphasis many of us place on A, not having enough money, on being in debt, on telling the universe that we can't possibly afford something. And so we limit our, um, um, the places that we go, we limit the, uh, the people that we see, we put limitations on our lives. And it may seem that once we have said or thought about something, that they disappear into the ethers and are forgotten. In fact, they do not disappear, but this kind of energy lives on. It lives on energetically. To show you example of what energetic effects these lack-filled statements have on our life, I would like to introduce to you the Bank of the Universe. Now, unlike other banks, The Bank of the Universe is open 24 hours a day. It's open seven days a week, and it's open infinitum. It never closes, and it it accepts as a deposit every single energy that we choose with our thoughts, our words, and our feelings in our heart. So by saying, let's say, for instance, by saying, I don't have enough money or if I only was in debt or I have, I don't have, or I can't do the things I want because I lack the money. By saying those things and the energy behind it, you are depositing negative units into the bank of the universe. There's always a receptionist at the bank of the universe and she says, oh, hello, hello, such and such. Thank you. Nice to see you again. I will take that negative unit and put it in your bank account. Every time we think, we speak, we feel. Day by day, minute by minute, month by month, year by year, the bank of the universe keeps depositing and amassing these energies that we choose to put into the bank. And because it's a normal bank, 
it must pay us dividends on all that we accumulated in our bank account. So don't be surprised when, for instance, you've accumulated all these negative units, which you are not conscious of. Don't be surprised when you drop the iron on your foot and break your toe. When you're in a supermarket and you go for the same cart and suddenly you have this altercation with somebody, you drew somebody to yourself who is negative. When you experience road rage or you're innocently sitting in traffic and you're the only one who someone rams you up the rear end when you're seemingly sitting there doing nothing. When you become conscious of this, that you have unwittingly put all these negative units in your bank account and it must bring you back negative dividends, then you become conscious of choosing to switch those negative thoughts, words, and feelings to abundant thoughts and positive thoughts that are of higher vibration. You can always say, instead of saying, I don't have enough money, you can say, I am abundant and I can have whatever I desire. My nature is abundant. I am pure potential and I can create more. That has a very different upbeat feeling to I don't have enough money. You can say, I'm always financially secure and I'm always provided for. Now, how good does that feel as opposed to I I I have so much debt and I am rich as one can experience, not just a richness of green units or money. One can experience a richness of health, a richness of love, a richness of friendships with these abundant energies flowing into our bank account. Well, the bank of the universe must bring us abundant connections and opportunities to match our abundant frequencies inside. And remember that the universe cannot tell the difference between reality and fantasy. So by closing your eyes and visualizing whatever you want your life to look like and to feel what it feels like to be already living that life, go on. Visualize yourself living in that palace in France, in the Loire Valley, if that's what you love. Feel the warmth of your sun as you sit on your balcony of your oceanfront home, sitting in iced tea and while you're tanning yourself, listening some, to some beautiful music, or ease yourself into your first-class airline seat as you sip your cocktail while you're on your way to your next exotic location. And you know what? If you invest your heart's longings, then the bank of the universe will then pay you dividends once again to fulfill your wishes because every time you wish something, whether it's positive or negative, the universe is like a big genie which says, your wish is my command and it will bring you the opportunities and the connections in energetic Uh, uh, resonance in order for you to realize whatever you state. And the most um, extraordinary thing about all of this, regardless of how much money that we all have, is that we are all on always, always on an equal playing field in our ability to manifest abundance in our lives. This capacity for wealth is like a treasure. It's like a a hidden treasure. It's there inside each and every one of us. It's in our pure potential to create, and it's our pure potential to keep our energies positive, bright, light, um, optimistic. Uh, But most people go to the default to find their wealth outside of themselves. And, uh, and many people seek to find their abundance in their bank accounts, which is just at the moment, it's reflective of those thoughts, those feelings, 
and those words that you've used before. We each have an unlimited, untapped possibility of abundance waiting to see the light of day. And it's contained in our enthusiasm, our vision, our passion. It's contained in our excitement for life. When we feel good inside, there is a wealth and a richness to our lives, and it makes us actually feel fulfilled. You know, each one of us knows what we love to do, what we like, and we know when we're compromising and settling for less in some aspect of our lives, either we're not respecting and honoring ourselves because we start to feel unfulfilled, bored, and unenthusiastic, just like that client of mine. If our heart truly knows what makes us happy, why would anyone then deny their excitement and go in the opposite direction to this wonderful feeling inside? You know, I am, I, you know, everyone, I do believe it happens because of three reasons. Many people go against their excitement because of money. You know, oh, I really don't like this job, but it pays more money. And so you actually diminish your wealth inside when you take a job just for the money or you do anything just for the money. If it goes against your feelings inside, because those feelings of not feeling good about doing something will actually negate the money that you're bringing in and change your reality and change your situations and bring to you events that aren't of high abundance. We do things because of our ego and not because they satisfy and they make us feel good inside. And the third one, which happens so often, is we deny our hearts by listening to and following others' uh, others' advice. Please do remember that the only person in the universe who knows you best is you. You know, those people that follow the excitement in their hearts They're absolutely more productive. They're more creative. They have more energy to do what they love to do. And this is because they feel rich. This leads to a brighter, positive, and optimistic outlook on life. With their energy soaring high, they don't feel compromised, but they feel expansive. These expansive energies then go out into the universe and their frequencies bring back connections of equal high positive energies. They live in a cycle of feeling wealthy and life reflects this wealth then back to them with equal amounts of wealthy opportunities. One of the most amazing things that we can do is to give to others. And when we give we get back tenfold. Many people don't understand this. If I, you know, if I give to somebody, how is that helping me? But the gift is in the giving. And we give, we feel wealthy. It comes back to us tenfold. So do try, listeners, by following that gratitude, that richness and excitement. See what magic and synchronicities and wealth begin to open up in your life as a result of doing so. I'd like to read you a poem which uh, reminds us all, at, uh, especially at this tax time, which many people are stressing over, but also throughout the year of where our true wealth lies. If diamonds were as plentiful as grass, as plentiful as pebbles on the beach, we wouldn't see them as we pass. They hardly would be worth a reach. We seem to value only what is rare, the plentiful hardly worth a glance. We take for granted water, food, and air as we race around the day like mindless ants. Much of those on earth are not so blessed. Fetid air, scarce water, scarcer food, Spoiled are we a thriving in the West, strangers to all simple gratitude. Rising, are we thankful for our health, for our shelter, for the comfort we enjoy? 
or blinded by hunger for more wealth, do we miss the very essence of our joy? Those who bow in gratitude and prayer for the endless gifts of God, both small and great, know the know that life itself, a gift beyond compare, a priceless gem we should appreciate. And that poem was written by my father, Leonard Milgram. Before we go to the break, I'd just like to give everyone a quick reminder that the current moon that we are experiencing, which was in deep dark Scorpio last week, on April the 5th, it moved into Sagittarius. Now, the Sagittarius new moon has brought with it optimism, good fortune, adventure, and a feeling of a desire to shake things up in your life, a feeling to travel. These energies are helping us to be bold and creative and and courageous in order to manifest our future desires to ourselves and for our dreams to come true. With Mercury also moving forward, and remember that Mercury does not go fully forward until April 15th or 16th, we are experiencing lots and lots of help from the universe with uh, all those things coming in to help us to move forward. You have been listening to me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be taking some of those calls for free angel readings. Do remember, you can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. And uh, I'll see you after the break. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Huff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Take your own journey with the angels with Claire Candy Huff's Heaven Sent Guided Angel Meditation CD. Letting go of concerns and living in the now. This beautiful CD walks listeners through practical exercises to help free them from the burdens, worries, and concerns of daily life. Walking a quarter of the way across the bridge, you see a bright emerald green light and sense a loving presence. This is Archangel Raphael's green healing energies nourishing and revitalizing you take a moment now to bathe in this green healing light giving you much more than just relaxation and stress release this wonderfully narrated cd provides vivid visualization soothing and inspiring music and an angel's choir that will bring you peace clarity and a newfound awareness visit angelhealinghouse.com today You're back with me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio. Uh, this week, uh, actually this whole month, the theme of April is in honor of tax time here in the States on April 15th. We are speaking about abundance. And uh, last week we spoke about abundance uh, being our nature, not money. And this week we're speaking about that you are wealthy, prosperous, and rich and how by being conscious and awakened and enlightened to the fact that your reality will reflect the energies inside of you if you keep your energies positive light bright with the words you say the feelings in your heart and the thoughts that you choose to think then you will manufacture or manifest a positive, abundant reality to yourself. Let's go to our callers. Our first caller we have is Kristen from L.A., Los Angeles. Hi, Kristen. How are you today? I'm good. Hi, Candy. How are you? Hi. 
I'm very well. Lovely to speak with you. What is your question today? Well, my question is I'm going to be traveling at the end of the week um, by myself, and I'm wondering if you can give me any insight or you see anything around this trip that I should be aware of. Okay. Um, there's, there's some fear inside of you. The reason you're asking this question is there's some fear inside of you. Um, and I, is it coming from this life? No, I I think it's coming from actually a past life. Um, it doesn't matter which, I'm just getting shivers all over. It doesn't matter which past life it was, but you were on a voyage, you were on a trip somewhere and, and ill came to you. Uh, you know, whether that was somebody stole something from you or you, or you had bodily harm or you were sexually assaulted or it, it almost doesn't matter what it is. What, what, what does matter is that you're conscious of there is that something inside of you is fearful about taking this trip. Um, so, uh, what they want you to do is, uh, when are you traveling in a week's time, you said? On Friday. On Friday. Okay. So um, between now and then, take some time to visualize. Uh, Close your eyes and visualize the trip and say, um, I'm safe. I'm protected. Draw in your own group of angels and say, um, wherever I am, the light around me is so enormous that it pushes away anything that is untoward. You know, um, uh, I just uh, helped uh, another client uh, who's, uh, who's young girl um, um, kept getting um, uh, stomach aches when she was in a certain situation. And I said, um, tell her to visualize that she is like in a protective egg, you know, covered with beautiful white light. The white light comes out of her, surrounds her. So wherever she is, she sees herself in that white positive light. And then it works and it goes out like your aura, like a buffer to protect you. And that way the fear inside of you doesn't draw anything untoward to yourself. Um, But besides that, I don't feel like there is anything else that you need to know. Was there anything else in particular that you were worried about this trip? Um, no, not worried, but um, more anticipation. So okay. there's a possibility that something on this trip could be a sign or maybe well, like a, a <laughs> well, well, so I should just enjoy myself, I guess. <laughs> okay. The, well, the first, the first thing is, is because we went from the um, Piscean age, which was the age of doing, um, to now the Aquarian age, which is the age of being. All we do have to do is be in that enthusiasm, that excitable nature of ours, Um, this trip wouldn't be happening. Nothing happens to us now that isn't divinely ordered. It is, this is, you know, your intuition followed that sign that told you and that, that created the abundance to be able to take this trip for a reason. Now, yes, it is a reason for you to enjoy yourself, but before you can go, before you go, you can also say, thank you. Thank you for all the amazing people that I can help on this trip and these people that can help me. Now, they could help you with friendship. They could help you with information. They could help you with job offers or business opportunities. There's a myriad of things that could happen. But thank the universe and say, I'm always at the right place. I'm always at the right place at the right time. So um, so this is is really important. It's important for you to remember Um, so let's go to the cards and see what comes out. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me see. Um, let's go to the cards and see what comes out. Um, shuffling. The sound on I don't know if you can hear but my I don't I can, can't hear you my, the sound on my computer has decided to go all the way down so I'm seeing if I can bring it back up again there we go okay I, I can hear you okay thank you Kristen I could not hear you okay let me go there there's something with my computer which is not very happy today 
Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's pull those three cards. Okay. Those three cards for you are the first card that's coming out for you is the patience card. And the patience card oh. is the, it's, it's about balance. Um, they're saying, <laughs> they're laughing and they're saying, beloved Christian, you want to know things before they happen. You're just that kind of person. <laughs> they want you to surrender and they want you to say that the most amazing things happen when we don't plan them. Because, okay, um, okay uh, they want to, the two words they're using are surrender and release. And not just patience, but they want you to know that you're always protected, you're always guided, you're more adored and cherished by the universe than you possibly can imagine, and you will be provided for in all situations. So um, please, don't, don't try to know any, everything before it happens. Don't try to figure it out. And this way you allow... <laughs> You allow for riches to come into you. And it's funny that I did say the word riches. Let me just show everybody the first card, which I always forget to do. That's the, that's the patience card. The next card that comes in for you is the three of pentacles. And that three of pentacles card is, uh, let me see, hold on, is the card of, um, of being honored and recognized. The universe recognizes oh. this above abundance with inside of you. Now that could be an abundance of friendship, an abundance of health, of love, all kinds, but just don't put an expectation and an attachment on it uh, because okay. then, this, then this lessens it. And the third one that's coming out for you is the world is your oyster card. I mean, this is the card of whatever, oh. whatever you imagine is yours. So you're in the driver's seat now and knowing that it's the thoughts and your words and the wishes in your heart, let go of the attachment and allow and surrender and release in order for real miracles and magic to happen in your life. You are, you are the perfect example of now of where many in the consciousness are because we have a wanderlust inside of us to shake things up and to travel. So I'd love, I'd love, love, love to know where your travels take you what happens along your journey. So be sure after your travels to call into the show and tell us, Kristen. Oh, I will. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. Have a beautiful, safe trip. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All the best. Let's go to Justina. Justina is in Illinois. Justina, we have you on the line. How are you today? Hi. I'm Hi. good. How are you? I'm very, very well. Thank you. What is your question? Um, is there something I wanted to tell you real quick? So um, one thing, I hope you put your dad's poems in a book because they're amazing and touch my heart every time you read one. I am, but my, the reason, that, okay, look, Justina, the reason my background is different to, uh, this week is because I am in Silver Spring, Maryland, and I am uh, at my mother's home, and um, uh, and I am going to tell her your comment you know, uh, because it will touch her heart. It will probably make her cry. Oh, it's fascinating. It's absolutely, oh my gosh, I just feel hugs around me anytime I hear you read one. It's, oh, it's, it's it's, oh, I got to so tell great. this to my mom. Thank you so much. Thank you so much <laughs> for your comment. <laughs> absolutely. Um, the other thing is, so I'm also a Reiki practitioner, and last night I was performing Reiki, and um I had this amazing experience, and usually it's for the client. You know, I have messages or something like that for them, but this time it was for me. And um, Jesus came kind of from my right side towards the back and laid a set of wings on my shoulders oh. and put a crown on my head, and he lifted my chin. Um, I often, throughout every time I'm doing Reiki, I say thank you, thank you over and over for letting me be a conduit, letting me be a vessel, letting me be able to bring his light to them. And um, and he looked at me and said, thank you. And then he said, now, please don't hide your gift anymore, because that's not why I gave it to you. Oh. And it's often been... Um, a struggle with me. There's a lot of people that don't know that I, I do Reiki. I'm also in the medical profession and that's not always encouraged. Um, right. Right. And 
Um, and But I feel like a giddy child every time I do Reiki. And mm-hmm. I feel like the force behind me is getting a lot stronger <laughs> recently <laughs> to um, <laughs> branch that out. Yes. So I don't even know where to go with that, but that's that's what I'm bringing to you. Okay. All right. Um, it is our time to go very public with this. Um, the reason it's time for us to go public with this, Justina, and believe me, we have free will. We don't, ha- we don't have to do what we don't want to do, but I can guarantee you when you cross over and you stand in front of the etheric council and they, you know, there's no judgment. They'll say, uh, you know, tell us about your life. What the thing that you'll say is I wish I didn't hide my talents and the gifts that I was given. Uh, we have been, we have been given these gifts in order for them to be shared. But now the, uh, now the powers that be want us, the universe, God, angels, Jesus, uh, that you spoke about, what they want us to do now is to step up in a very public way. You know, that's why, um, uh, that's why, you know, years ago when they asked me to put my face on my book, I am an angelic walk-in, um, I felt like a deer in the headlights, you know, um, it's very scary. Yeah. But the reason for this is because the world has shifted and they're ready and they're hungry to hear about alternative healings, about, uh, you know, all the things that we take for granted that we know as conduits for this energy and this amazing, amazing healing system. Um, so what, what they want you to do is they want you to, in your quiet reflection, they want you to uh, bring closure to the time that you were destroyed for practicing the art, whether you, were, whether you were deemed a witch or whether, like myself, whether you were burned at the stake or whether you were, um, when I was a healer in 14th century Scotland, as I write about in my book, One True Home, you know, whatever that is, bring closure to that and said, we have been promised that that will never happen to us again. Um, and um, I, I lovingly I accept my, to be a best service and I let go the way that that needs to come in. Um, and you will then be put out in a very public way. Your energies are so pure, sweetheart. They are just, they are, I, 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 I tap you. in very easily to people's energies and your energies make me cry. They're sweet. Oh they're, my gosh, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> they're, they're energies of integrity, of grace. Uh, you're not doing this for the ego. You're not doing this for the money. You're doing this to be of service to the highest order. You will to will his will or her will, God's will. Um, and, uh, and more people must know about this. So open yourself up to this being able to be used in a very, very, very public way, no matter what your family says, no matter what society says, no matter what anybody says, because there are so many people hungry for your energy to help them shift um, into the light. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go to the cards and see what comes out. Don't you be afraid. We have been promised in this lifetime that none of those things are going to happen to us. And allow yourself to be utilized. And you will be utilized. Um, let me go to the cards, see what comes out. Thank you. The first card is the transformation card. That's the card. That's the death card in my deck. And it's the card of endings and new beginnings. So you will be bringing in new beginnings. There's no question about it. Um, wow. the, more, the more that you can release attachment and expectation to this, then, uh, okay. um, then uh, you will surrender, and then you will be able to be to release. The next card for you is the hanged man, and the hanged man is all about perception. It's all about your different perspective. Um, just mm-hmm. keep saying, "Thank you for showing me how to be of best service for my soul's growth, the greatest good of myself, and the greatest good of all concerned." And the next card is coming out for you is the King of Cups. And that's really the highest uh, intuition card in the deck. Embrace, embrace oh your gosh, psychic. Oh, I just got goosebumps. 
embrace your psychic and your telepathic awareness and just keep opening yourself up to be of best service. And you know what they're saying? It's time. It's time, Justina. So um, I cannot wait to see what is going to transpire with you. Mercury goes full forward April 15th and 16th. Uh, the world is truly our oyster now. Um, as we, we might be asked to travel and to move overseas, we might be asked to do, wow. go to different locations. We might be asked to do something which we've never done before, but we will have the skills and the wherewithal to get up to speed to, to do this. Going on speaking engagements, don't limit yourself. That would be you, amazing. Justina, your, it, mm-hmm. your talents and your abilities are so needed on the earth plane and they will call upon you, but just tell them I am willing and I will to will God's will. And then you'll see what comes in. I hope that's been helpful for you, sweetheart. And I'll never be left alone in this. No, no, ever, not ever. Because when you step into being of service, then the angels know you better than you know yourself. People might fall out of your life and think you're cuckoo and crazy and and woo-woo and goodness knows what. But, but But then what happens is the new people come in to be of the same resonance because then you attract that to yourself that will help you in your career. They'll help you emotionally and they'll be there for you. And you're never without your angelic help. You'll be fine. And if you need help, you have my phone number. Thank you. You're very welcome. You'll be fine, Justina. Just keep shining and asking them how to be of best service. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. God blessing you and giving you a big, big hug. (laughs) Thank you. Take care, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Let's go to our next caller. We have Heidi. Heidi is in Los Angeles as well. Hi, Heidi. How are you? Hi, Candy. How are you? I'm good. I'm I'm very well, thank you. What is your question? (laughs) Um, Just a question. I have a relationship with you. I just want to kind of know uh, what's next in this relationship. Okay. In your relationship. Okay. um, I guess the most important thing in any relationship question is, do you feel honored and do you feel respected? um, And do you feel compromised in this relationship in any way? Um, No. uh -uh. Okay. That's good. All right. So that's a, that's a great start. Um, Know that, that um, as long as you are going into a relationship and you feel joyful, you feel enthusiastic, you know, sometimes you can feel infatuation. Sometimes it's best friends. Sometimes it's romantic love. But just as long as you keep honoring and respecting yourself, know full well that you cannot interfere with this other person's free will and free choice. So it's very difficult to say that what will happen in this relationship, um, because, you know, this other person, uh, they may be full on, but then they might get cold feet uh, and feel that they can't commit. So the only thing that you can do is, uh, is be honest and transparent and open in a relationship and um, it's like a, uh, like a measuring device or a divining vice. Just see if it always honors and respects you, if you never have to compromise who you are and you can always be yourself in a relationship. That's going to help enormously. Right. Um, let me go to the cards and see what comes out. Uh, the posse of angels are also saying, please don't judge this relationship on any former relation any any former relationship or any relationship that you previously had because you're a different person now if you have found your way to angel healing house then you are a different person now (laughs) you know because (laughs) because i i know this and that's what they're whispering in my ear uh and so lots of people say well i won't commit in a relationship or i won't love again or i won't open up my heart again or I won't do X, Y, Z, or whatever that is, you know, that you did before. Like people say, I'll never get married because of my abusive ex. Well, I was, I didn't like my ex. For instance, when I write about it in my my book, I am an angelic walk-in. I didn't like my ex, but, uh, but I still like the institution of married, marriage. And so when, uh, when Pete asked me to marry him after five days, I said, yes, 
you know, I said, you know, <laughs> that was it. You know, I knew after the first day it took him, it took him five days to figure it out. But anyway, um, <laughs> you're a, you're a different person now. You're a different person physically, mentally, emotionally, sp- spiritually, cellularly, all of these differences, and you will draw a different person to yourself. So let's go to the cards and see what we can glean from the cards about our relationship. Oh, this is a great card. The eight of wands is about an opening. This is about fast moving energy and opportunity opening up for you. The thing that they're having me notice is the deer. The deer is a symbol of being gentle, of being kind, of being, uh, of allowing things. This is the card with the deer on it. Don't push the river of life. Don't try to figure this out. If it's an enjoyable relationship and again, you feel honored in it and it's making you happy, then go with it. The minute that that stops is the minute that you have to relook at this. But uh, there are new little buds on all of those wands in this card. And it's it, and they're saying, allow this relationship to blossom in its own timing. There's the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is a one card. It's a new beginning. It's a, it's a, a, f- a fresh start card. So this feels as if this is a faded, uh, a faded relationship. Um, I don't, feel like it's a twin flame relationship let me just ask the posse of angels it doesn't matter if it is or isn't no it's a beautiful soulmate relationship and you've come back to complete something or to uh to create something together so um you've obviously done this dance in a different incarnation and the six of wands is having you um it's it's the movement card moving from rougher waters to smooth waters. So all indications is that this relationship is uh, is very timely and that you both will learn something from it um, and just allow it to grow and uh, and stop trying to figure it out. That's good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much. Take care, Heidi. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We have time for one more caller. We have Julia from Florida. Julia? You're on the line hey. with Claire Candy House. How are you? Great. Great to get to talk to you. I wasn't sure if I would get in or not. <laughs> you, you squeaked in at the end. I'm so yeah. glad you did. <laughs> so how Thank are you? you? What's your questions? Oh, I'm doing great. Um, actually, same as the last caller. I'm hoping to connect with, um, you know, I'm, I call it my heartmate or my, yep. you know, my divine life partner. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, the, oh, well, the thing, <laughs> well, if, if, uh, for those who did read my book, I am an angelic walk-in. I wrote my decree. I wrote what I wanted in a love for myself. Um, and then we, you know, we worked together, we traveled together. Uh, we allowed each other just to be ourselves. Um, uh, that he was kind, considerate, loyal, sounded like a dog, you know, uh, like the characteristics of a dog, um, sweet, treated me like a princess, all of those things. And I used to um, read it out morning and night, sleep with it under my pillow. Um, and, uh, and within six weeks of doing this, he was around me etherically. We were together and I used to do things with him. I used to include him in, let's go shopping together. You know, let's watch a movie together. I would eat popcorn and feed him popcorn on the couch. I'd pull the covers over him at bed at night. Uh, nothing was more important than having this uh, this beloved with me. And at that come as your favorite rock star party, six months later, there he came as Elvis. I went as Stevie Nicks. And five days after that, he asked to marry me. Um, it's some people say it's fairy tale, but it's, it's focused intention. Um, and if you focus your intention, Julia, on this, uh, nothing, nothing is more important because energy is energy. And I can guarantee you, and the posse of angels are nodding their heads and they're saying yes, that the reason that you're feeling this strong pull is because he's thinking about you as well. He is. He is. And don't worry. Nobody's going to snap him up because he's yours. He's yours. Etherically, he's there for you. You just, it just hasn't been the right timing to bring it into uh, into the physical. So when we go to our cards, the first, and I did shuffle, the first card is coming out for you is patience. And, and that's it. 
don't try to hurry this before it's divinely ordered. It will come, it will come to you because they're saying that you have work to do together um, and to bring, um, uh, to bring something and create something on the earth plane. The next one is the empress. The empress is about the creativity and the fertility, not fertility in having a child per se, but fertility in creating something together on the earth plane. And the next card that's coming out for you is the three of wands. And the three of wands is... The ships coming in is standing there and waiting to see how the universe is going to bring this to you. So I'm glad you squeaked in um, because it is give, it's giving it's giving you hope that it's there in the etheric for you and to please don't lose hope and to uh, and to know that this divine love is yours. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I, I wonder about it, you know, is it going to happen? Or like you said, the patience, when is it going to happen? <laughs> when is it going to happen? I guess so. I don't want to be one of those people who grow old alone. So I, just, I, you know, I know. So I say, so, so what, you, what you can do, Julia, is you can say thank you. And that you can control. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for my divine love. Thank you so much. And be in such gratitude and appreciation that it creates even more of a draw to yourself. I have to go now, sweetheart. Okay, God bless you. you so Take much. care. Bye bye. And and that just about wraps the show up for today. Thank you to all my callers. If you did not get the chance to be on Angel Healing House Radio today, please do try again next week because. It, I'm here every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard, Ta- Pacific Standard Time on Transformation Talk Radio. And I do take callers every single week. So do remember, everyone, to go out and fashion an absolutely beautiful life for yourself. I'm sending you love and angel blessings. And take care of yourself. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Mm-hmm.